It's all music to the ears of you late night news watchers and dial switchers. And as Nightwatch celebrates year one, we thought we'd invite some of our colleagues from other networks, folks who keep similar hours, all in the interest of keeping you informed. Standing by at the ABC studio in Washington is Nightline's Ted Koppel. And at NBC's New York studio, Linda Ellerby and Bill Schechner of NBC Overnight. Welcome to all three. Glad to have you with us on Nightwatch. Certainly a network first. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes, happy, happy birthday to us. Thank you very much. And happy birthday to you. Ted, you are the uh, senior citizen of the group here. You've been on the just, air. You just mean I'm older than the rest of you. That's all. <laughs> Not at all. You really are, are kind of the patriarch in some ways. You, um, your show was one of the first on the air late night. Looking back now from this um, perspective, now, what do you think? Do you think the public is kind of too thoroughly soaked with news? Do you think there's a point at which we'll get to be too much? Oh, I've got to tell you, Felicia, I think what happens in our business, as in every other business, is uh, that the public just buys so and so much of it, and then eventually it doesn't make any difference whether you're selling news or whether you're selling widgets. Uh, sooner or later you find out that the public has, has, has gorged its appetite on widgets and then some of the widget factories go by the wayside. I suspect the same thing will happen to us one of these days, but let's hope it doesn't happen tomorrow. Do you think that that's what happened with the, uh, the ABC uh, program that did go off the air? That the people, did they vote and say that that was too much? Why did they not survive and why are we all surviving? Well, I don't know. Maybe because there were different expectations. Uh, the ABC program that you're referring to, The Last Word, uh, had a bit of a rough knock in that it came on right away during a ratings period and didn't do too well during that first ratings period. Uh, but also because they were coming on at midnight, the expectations as to the audience was somewhat larger. Uh, you've got a bit of an advantage in that, uh, you know, at your time of day, if you bring in uh, what's, what's your audience? A million? Over a million? A million and a half a on a, a slow half. night. Well, you know, if you bring in a million and a half folks uh, in, in, you know, at, at those hours, uh, I would think the network is probably delighted. Absolutely. If you If you have only a million and a half at midnight, uh, then, you know, they, a little more disappointing. they lock away all those rolls, rolls of towels in the executive bathrooms. Well, Linda, you know, the reception of your show has been wide and broad. What do you think it is that's turning the public on to your show? Each one of our shows has a separate personality and I would think a separate audience. What is it about what you're offering over there at NBC keeps people up? Well, I'm not sure it keeps people up. I think there are a lot more people up than the network suspected. And uh, as far as it's not to, putting them to sleep for sure. <laughs> well, I certainly hope it's not putting them to sleep. I, as far as what Ted said about when there's too much news, I don't think we're in a situation where there's too much news. I think you can ask the question: that Why, until last year, did all three networks say, if you want a national newscast, you'd better be home in place, you know, at seven o'clock or six thirty or five thirty, depending where you are? I think it's about time that we added this news. Bill, what have you learned about who your audience is? Who's up? As far as we can tell, a lot of people are coming off of uh, four to midnight kind of shifts. Uh, they're the regulars. They're the people for whom our broadcast, or yours, uh, is the main newscast of their day. They want to find out what happened. And um, then there are bunches of students, we think. We can tell that from the mail. And uh, occasional uh, transients, you know, nursing mothers and people who are up uh, a little while and turn on and find us. But there are, like Linda said, there are a lot of people for whom this is not an unusual shift. It's just the way their work day is, it's like us. I mean, it's the way our work day is, too. <laughs> yeah, we go home and watch you guys. <laughs> and we watch you. We watch all of us. But now, Ted, you are on a little earlier than Night Watch or than Overnight. Do you think your audience is a lot different? Uh, yes, I think it is, because I think our audience is made up of people who kind of sample the first minute or two. They'll come on, and on the basis of whether or not they want to watch that particular subject, they stay with us or go away. Let me, let me just jump back uh, for a moment to something that Linda was saying. Mm -hmm. I agree totally with what she said, namely, up until now, the networks have said, we're here, our store is open at 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the evening, and if you're free, you all come on by and watch mm -hmm. the news. I think the big difference, however, now is cable television, which has learned that if you're available 24 hours a day so that you can say to people, in effect, any time that's convenient for you, come on and tune in, 
That's something a little bit different. But nevertheless, even though you're available at hours that previously were not serviced by news, you're still there at a particular time. You set up shop at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, and folks have got to come, come and find you then. So you think it's much more of a service now? That we are possibly more service oriented. No, we're not. In the in the eighties, uh, as no, networks. the commercial the, the the commercial networks are not. That's precisely my point. Then the we were networks before. Are still taking the position. If you want to watch this particular program, we are here at such and such an hour. It's the it's, it's the, the cable, cable networks mm -hmm. now that are saying, uh, hey, customers, you're the ones who are important. I mean, they're saying it because they think they can they can make an inroad in our business, and they are. Uh, they're saying you come at any time that's convenient for you and, you know, hang around for about 15 or 20 minutes, and you'll be sure to get the news. That's then, Bill, do you think that maybe we're all here because of uh, maybe trying to keep Ted Turner in his place? I don't think we're trying to keep him in his place. I think we're here because we provide a service for our affiliate stations. I mean, some way or other has to be found to get pictures across the country, and a news show is one way to do it. But um, in addition to that, I think it is a case of... Um, the large news gathering organizations, the networks, beginning to understand not only are there people out there, but our experience has been that there are people who really want to know what's going on. We get an extraordinary kind of mail. Um, it's very closely written mail. Uh, it's more than just, gosh, we think you're great mail. It's, it's why did you say this, or it's a grammar correction. We get a lot of that. Uh, I do. Linda doesn't. Um, let's, let's take a break right now and come back. We'll be back in just a moment. Ted Koppel of Nightline of ABC and Linda Ellerby and Bill Schechner of Overnight from NBC. So glad to be back with you and to have you here. One thing that we should get into, um, some of the questions that people would like to ask us and don't get a chance to, the real people kinds of questions like, how do you survive these hours? How have these hours affected all of your lives? Linda first, maybe. <laughs> what life? <laughs> These hours are just fine. Uh, the only problem with the hours is that the rest of the world refuses to keep them. Uh, so it, it, it's very difficult. It, it's, I have two teenage children and I get up to see them off to school and go back to sleep, sleep in shifts. And social life just sort of disappears. Uh, <laughs> Remember your friends? Remember the day people? <laughs> Who? <laughs> right. What about you, Bill? Well, I'm, I'm intrigued by the question because the people who are watching it know what it's like absolutely and it's uh it's hard it's been hard on uh on my family i don't see them as much as i would like uh i don't get to see my friends i don't get to see theater i don't get to see as many movies as i'd like because i i find that um i just can't manage to do that kind of stuff during the afternoon on the other hand i bet you that there are uh, a lot of people who would love to have my problems and probably my paycheck so too. So dare not complain. Ted, I, I heard that you think this is an improvement on your old schedules when you were a correspondent. Well, I, as a matter of fact, I'm, I, I was just thinking when you asked the question about this great movie, I think it was called The Long Arm of the Law with Peter Sellers years ago, and he, uh -huh. played, the, he played the part of a, a fellow who got into trouble with the law, and he'd been in jail for about three years, and his wife came to see him and was terribly pregnant. And he said, you know, how is that possible? And she said, oh, you wrote some lovely letters. And I sometimes think that, uh, you know, if I'd been doing this shift, <laughs> You know, 12, 14, 16, 18 years ago, I wouldn't have the four kids I've got right now. But it is an improvement, because I, I, used, to, I used to travel a great deal. I was a foreign correspondent, and uh, there were times in my life when I was gone for eight, nine months out of the year. Uh, there, I was in Vietnam once for, for a year straight, and, and saw my family, uh, you know, literally every couple of months when they'd let me fly up to Hong Kong on R&R. &R. Well, having breakfast at 3 o'clock in the afternoon has certainly changed my life. But I'm wondering if it makes a difference whether or not you're single or married. I've made a quick informal poll myself, and it seems that all of the male anchors in late-night network television are married, and all of the females are single. What should we make of this? I, I think it shows that we've been more selective in picking our mates, for one thing. Uh, what? Uh, but no, there's, <laughs> there, there's, there's another point to be made. I sometimes wonder, Carl Bernstein's become a good friend of mine over the years, and I sometimes wonder if Richard Nixon might not still be president today if, if Woodward and Bernstein, you know, had been married. I mean, can you imagine Woodward saying to his wife, I'm going to meet someone in this garage and it's two o'clock in the morning. I don't think that story ever would have been broken. If you're married to a news person, you just learn to understand. 
Linda, do you think that it takes a certain personality to be a, a host of a late night show? We're, I'm, I'm talking style maybe here. People have said that your style, for example, really stands out and that maybe it stands out to the point that it wouldn't fit in in earlier hours. You, of course, disagree. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't think... I don't know. I, I find that a kind of funny question. I, it's, it's not as though I began work with this show. I've been with the network nine years now. Mm -hmm. and my style has not appreciably changed and my attitude hasn't gotten appreciably better in nine years. The problem is you're just seeing a lot more of it now. But I'd be perfectly willing to switch with Tom Brokaw for a week and we could find out. <laughs> what do you think, Ted? Uh, certainly none of us started here, but uh, some people who don't do this have made that comment that maybe it takes a certain personality to work these hours to attract a late night audience. Well, I don't Aside think... from the journalistic uh, attributes. I've got to tell you, I don't think that any one of us would have been selected by the experts as, as becoming uh, an anchor of any kind, late night, early morning, right. early evening. Uh, and all it says is that uh, experts, more often than not, are wrong. Uh, at least I hope that's what it means. Maybe they're dead right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope they're all wrong. On that, we'll have to wrap. And thank you very much for being with us to celebrate our first birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Good Happy luck to birthday. all of us. Thank you.